and I hope that everyone's reaction to his passing is to go learn a little bit more about him that you did. I agree. I 100% agree. As a matter of fact, I do. Yes, everyone will forcibly learn about Henry Kissinger in the upcoming week. And that will not be a good thing because Henry Kissinger and his policies were so monstrous. By programs which are openly and avowedly pure fiction. And should be. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Am I being debated? Am I being debated? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Is this for real? Are we being for real right now? Folks. Am I being for real? Are you being for real? A moment we have waited for, for so long. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and MBs. This is one of the greatest villains. Our, and many others, lifetimes. Henry Kissinger dies at age 100. Oh my God. Anne, Baba! Henry Kissinger is dead. What a, what a glorious day. I mean, only at the age of 100, unfortunately, died. Surrounded, I assume, by his blood boys and family members and loved ones. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Henry Kissinger, notorious villain, architect of American Cold War, genocidal monster, one of the greatest genocidal figures of all time, literally. Henry Kissinger has died at the age of 100. Hey, die before Jimmy Carter. R.I.P. Bozo. Incredible stuff. It's crazy. He's dead. Everyone has written an obituary. Like, there are so many people that have most likely... Like, look look how fast they dropped this on the Washington Post. This has been a moment that everyone was waiting... So many people were waiting for. Kind of a tasteless reaction to, towards a man who did so much stuff in his time. Bro, this is like... Like, you know how America celebrated when Osama bin Laden was fucking murk? Like, this dude is Osama bin Laden to the third world times one million. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's no comparison. I mean, this is, the, this is the true villain. Like, if there's a singular force of evil that you can, you can point to, feels too soon, you know? Maybe let's wait a bit. No fucking shot, dude. Fuck that guy. Wow. I'm, I'm in a little bit of shock. Did Kissinger die? Yes. We, 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 uh, we broke it before they did, dude. We outflanked them. Oh, my God. I'm not. I don't know what to say. What a glorious, joyous moment. What a joy of, I mean, what a what a joyous moment. But also at the same time, it's like you know he he got to fucking live to a hundred. Hmm. Let's take a look at what let's take a look at what Henry Kissinger was doing right before he died, guys. Let's take a look. Let's let's take a look at what he was doing right before he died. Oh, Henry Kissinger on Hamas tax fallout. Germany let in too many foreigners. As a minority in Berlin cheers Hamas attacks on Israel, former top U.S. diplomat says. Immigration was a grave mistake. Bro, so many, so many of these pieces of shit. It's like Diane Feinstein all the way to the end. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. 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 What can you say? Only thing that makes me sad is that Anthony Bourdain died before he could see this old man pass, you know? <laughs> Guy was talking about grave mistakes. Motherfucker was worried about the wrong grave. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. These are moments where I where I assume uh where I hope that, you know, hell is real, right? So that he fucking goes. I mean, here, if you want to know, here's Anthony Bourdain's uh opinion on on Henry Kissinger. Once you've been to Cambodia, you'll never stop wanting to beat Henry Kissinger to death with your bare hands. Dude, he doesn't like people like this, evil never dies, okay? People like this, people like this unfortunately they they just get away with it. They, they stay alive for 100 years. Shout out to you when you went to his 100th birthday. Hassan Piker in Austin show attends war criminal Henry Kissinger's 100th birthday party. Rap TV. Kissinger died to a self-sucking incident. That's what I've heard too. Here, let's watch the Mehdi Hassan video on <laughs> like literally. Kiss let me tell you something. This is going to be the lightest version of his uh, most grave uh, uh, crimes against humanity. Kissinger's 100th birthday. Yes, the man who said... Oh my God, I made this... Did I... I made this prediction, right? I said... That was one of my... That was one of my predictions! Henry Kissinger will die on November 7th, 2023. Shit. Close, but no cigar. ...served as National Security Advisor and Secretary of State to two Republican presidents, Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford, 
the author of more than a dozen best-selling books on foreign policy and grand strategy, and a man who's been described as arguably the most famous and controversial diplomat of the 20th century, turns a century old on Saturday, May the 27th. In fact, this past Monday, Kissinger blew out the candles on his 100th birthday cake on the Economic Club of New York stage in front of an adoring audience. And remember, it's not just conservatives who worship at the altar of the Henry Kissinger. Establishment liberals, top Democrats even, have fallen over one another to associate themselves with the great Kissinger to heap praise upon his ginormous intellect and historic achievements. Barack Obama's administration honored Kissinger with a special award. Hillary Clinton called him her friend and said she relied on his counsel. Samantha Power, the self-styled champion of humanitarian interventions, went to a baseball uh -huh. game with Kissinger. And Joe Biden, when he was a senator, toasted Kissinger. Although, to be fair, he hasn't yet invited him to the White House like all of his predecessors have done. But look, here's what I want to do to mark Kissinger's 100th birthday. I want to talk about some of the many, many people around the world who didn't get to live till 100 or even 60, 70 or 80 because of Henry Kissinger, because of his support for brutal dictators, brutal regimes, brutal wars and war crimes. Let's start, where else? In Southeast Asia, the war in Vietnam, which Kissinger may have ridiculously won a Nobel Peace Prize for ending, but which he prolonged and escalated in the first place, including a secret and illegal expansion of that bloody war to Laos and Cambodia. It was him. Thanks to a report released by the Department of Defense in 1973, we know that the National Security Council, headed by Henry A. Kissinger, approved each of the 3,875 Cambodia bombing raids in 1969 and 1970, as well as the methods for keeping them out of the newspapers. To quote Kissinger himself while instructing an all-out air assault on Cambodia, anything that flies on anything that moves. As Human Rights Watch noted in 2001, United States and South Vietnamese aerial bombings on Kissinger's watch left approximately 350,000 Laotian civilians and 600,000 Cambodian civilians dead. And just this past week, The Intercept reported on the basis of U.S. military documents and eyewitness accounts from Cambodian survivors that Kissinger is responsible for more civilian deaths in Cambodia than was previously known. And yet, Kissinger has never apologized for what he did to Laos or Cambodia, instead defending those bombing campaigns as legitimate attacks on North Vietnam. I failed to see the moral issue. Vietnamese forces and saying he failed to see any moral issue with them. Still, as the late great Anthony Bourdain once wrote, witness what Henry did in Cambodia, the fruits of his genius for statesmanship, and you will never understand why he's not sitting in the dock at The Hague next to Milosevic. Then there's Argentina. In 1976, a coup d'etat overthrew the elected president and replaced Eva Perón with a military junta. That junta then launched what's been called the Dirty War, the hunting down of political dissidents, of socialists, trade unionists, students. And they launched it with the approval, encouragement even, of Henry Kissinger. We know this thanks to declassified documents, which The New Yorker reported on. Oh, God, I'm going to do such a fat America bad propaganda power hour tomorrow. It's not even funny. Like, so many mothers that always say, Hassan, all you say is America bad are finally going to come to terms with why America bad. Incredible stuff. There are often times, there, there are very, there are very few singular individuals that you can point at when describing American foreign policy being just insurmountable evil, right? Because it's oftentimes, it's oftentimes simply a, it's oftentimes simply a, a uh, collection of individuals uh, acting out on their capital self-interest. No, tomorrow's not the IRL stream. It's next week. I was wrong. Writing. Two days after the coup, Kissinger was briefed by his assistant secretary of state, who warned him, I think also we've got to expect a fair amount of repression, probably a good deal of blood in Argentina before too long. Kissinger replied, whatever chance they have, they will need a little encouragement because I do want to encourage them. In a meeting with the Argentine foreign minister two months later, Kissinger advised him, in the words of the New Yorker, winkingly, quote, we are aware you are in a difficult period. We must understand. We understand you must establish authority. If there are things that have to be done, you should do them quickly. Somewhere between 20 and 30,000 people are believed to have been arrested, tortured and killed in Argentina's dirty war. As The Guardian notes, many bodies have never been found. No birthday parties for them. 
Then there is East Timor, which was invaded by Indonesia in December 1975, an invasion that led to the death of at least 100,000 people over the next two decades plus of Indonesian occupation, according to a UN-backed Truth Commission. On the eve of that invasion, literally the day before, Kissinger alongside President... There's so much more. Like, this is just not even a highlight. Like, this is not even... This doesn't even scratch the motherfucking surface, dude. I don't... I, I can't even begin to explain this to you, okay? Yo, who's worse, Bin Laden or America statistically victim-wise? Wait, what? Bin Laden or America victim-wise? What, what do you mean? America fucking killed one million Iraqis. Like, what... America sneezes and on accident fucking kills like 3,000 civilians. President Ford met... America's the greatest terrorist on the planet. There's nothing that comes close to the number of, of civilian ca civilian deaths. The Indonesian dictator, General Suharto. Yeah. Bin Laden is the coughing baby if America is the, the hydrogen bomb. <laughs> and basically gave him the green light to invade. To quote Kissinger's advice to Suharto from a declassified document... It is important that whatever you do succeeds quickly, but that it would be better if it were done after we returned to the United States. Then there's East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, which was attacked by a military-ruled West Pakistan, now just Pakistan, in 1971, a conflict that killed hundreds of thousands of Bengalis and displaced millions. And yet, as Princeton professor Gary Bass has shown, based on declassified documents and White House tapes, Kissinger stood stoutly behind Pakistan's generals, supporting the murderous regime at many of the most crucial moments. And when a U.S. diplomat on the ground in what was then East Pakistan sent a cable to Washington warning of a genocide, Kissinger called the man a maniac and had him dismissed from his post. I could go on and on and on, sadly. I didn't even get to Chile in Kissinger's support for General Pinochet's coup there or his betrayal of Iraq's Kurds. Kissinger, of course, has for years denied any criminal culpability for any of this. But he did cancel a trip to South America in 2002 after Chile opened a probe into the Pinochet coup. As human rights lawyer Bruce Broomhall told the New York Times back then, quote, I think it's clear that Kissinger is now one of many, many officials who have to think twice before they travel. As historian Greg Grandin of Yale has argued, a full tally hasn't been done, but a back-of-the-envelope count would attribute three, maybe four million deaths to Kissinger's actions. Easy. So where is the accountability? The reckoning? Where is justice, dare I ask? In his 2001 book, The Trial of Henry Kissinger, the late Christopher Hitchens called for Kissinger to be prosecuted for war crimes, for crimes against humanity, and for offenses against common or customary or international law, including conspiracy to commit murder, kidnap, and torture. And yet Kissinger this week celebrates his landmark 100th birthday with not an arrest warrant or war crimes tribunal in sight. Henry Kissinger being a free man for his entire life after the many war crimes that he was the direct architect of truly shows America's hegemonic power status. Okay? Like... It, it goes to show you that the International Criminal Court, the Hague, International Humanitarian Law, all of these organs that are supposed to uphold the liberal, rule-based international order are simply there for aesthetic purposes or, in many instances, to give the go-ahead to the United States of America to go and bludgeon our foreign adversaries. Was this popular opinion to say against Kissinger years ago? Yes. 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 Henry Kissinger has been a notorious evil figure that, uh, notoriously evil figure that many people consider to be objectively evil for so long. It's not even a, a controversy. It's a cliche. To say rest and piss Henry Kissinger is is unironically a cliche. The, f the funny problem, I mean, the funny situation is that, like, a lot of liberals that you will be hearing from tomorrow that celebrate Henry Kissinger's death, people that adorn the aesthetics of radical politics, will be doing it without even considering the irony of their endless defense for American misconduct, American imperialism, 
in the ongoing conflicts. I'm not just talking about 4 million dead. You have to take into account how many decades worth of economic and social hardship these countries are having to endure because of him, forever stuck in the depths of poverty, humanity set back as a whole because of this one demon. The 4 million <clears throat> are direct birth defects. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I showed the Anthony Bourdain quote from his book. Once you've been to Cambodia, you'll never stop wanting to beat Henry Kissinger to death with your bare hands. You will never again be able to open a newspaper and read about what that treacherous, prevaricating, murderous scumbag sitting down for a nice chat with Charlie Rose or attending some black tie affair for a new glossy magazine without choking. Witness what Henry did in Cambodia, the fruits of his genius for statesmanship, and you will never understand why he's not sitting in the dock at The Hague next to Milosevic. While Henry continues to nibble nori rolls and ramaki at A-list parties, Cambodia, the neutral nation he secretly and illegally bombed, invaded, undermined, and then threw the dogs, is still trying to raise itself up on its one remaining leg. Two years ago, prediction? Asshole. Kissinger finally dies? Um, No, I, I, I made this prediction in 2022. I was wrong, and I made it in 2023 again. I was right. So don't show the 2022 one. Show the 2023 sure, one. Sure, I'll put it in there. I don't think it's going to happen, but... At Hussein Abbey go on the Joe Rogan. That was in... Yeah, I wasn't confident in 2020. Uh, that was in 2021 when I predicted for 2022. Um, he later provided some assistance to the Johnson administration, but found his home ultimately as the implementer uh, and chief advisor to Richard Nixon. And it is the Nixon Kissinger team that would be the most consequential of any team uh, in U.S. foreign policy until the end of the Cold War. After uh, he left uh, Washington, he remained significant, um, not only as a conduit between American foreign policy leaders and leaders that Kissinger had known, but Kissinger was the man to see if you wanted to meet the, the latest American president. So, Richard, so Kissinger is not only significant in shaping the policies of one presidency, as both a national security advisor, then a secretary of state, then both. But he would become a signal figure, an important figure for those trying to understand U.S. foreign policy for decades. Indeed, after his 100th birthday, Henry Kissinger was an honored guest in China. And for the Chinese, Kissinger was a symbol of a relationship uh, with the United States that frankly doesn't really exist anymore. Kissinger was also extremely controversial because he and Nixon had undertaken extremely controversial policies. The Christmas bombing and at the overturning of the Allende government in Chile. Huh. Yeah. And you know what I'm thinking? Dude, if the CNN if CNN is saying he's controversial, you know his ass is the worst monster. You know what I mean? He undertook to forge a piece, you know, after the 1973 war and what that looked like. And just can you talk about that influence that he had, particularly on this region in that moment? Well, it, he had enormous influence, first of all, because the president of the United States was largely incapacitated during the Yom Kippur War. Uh, Nixon uh, was um, was dealing with um, the acceleration of the Watergate uh, scandal and the, the start of the impeachment inquiry. And for all intents and purposes, Richard uh, Henry Kissinger was directing U.S. foreign policy during the Yom Kippur crisis. After the crisis, Kissinger, with Nixon's approval, of course, but Kissinger undertook the most complicated set of negotiations to um, establish uh, a, a lasting ceasefire on both the northern border with Syria and the uh, border with Egypt in the south. That took enormous effort Everyone and was a, New York a, a real diplomatic achievement on the part of, of Henry Kissinger. So he is remembered as a very significant figure in the history of the Middle East. And let's not also forget that he undertook very strenuous negotiations with the Vietnamese, the North Vietnamese, which led to the end of the American uh, dimension of the Vietnam Civil War. So Henry Kissinger was the most significant uh, diplomatist of uh, the Cold War, without 
exception. The Beltway Butcher, war criminal Kissinger, dead at 100. I wonder if Henry Kissinger's death will cause people to just, like, take a cold, hard look at our policy, like our foreign affairs, everything that we've done, especially because it's been so long. Holy fuck, Spencer Ackerman is another one of those people that 100% friend of the show, Spencer Ackerman, definitely had an obituary. Definitely had an obituary ready to go. Henry Kissinger died on Wednesday at his home in Connecticut. His consulting firm said in a statement, the notorious war criminal was 100. Measuring purely by confirmed kills, worst mass murder ever ex uh, executed by the United States was white supremacist terrorist Timothy McVeigh. On April 19, 1995, McVeigh detonated a massive bomb at the Murrah Federal Building, killing 168 people, including 19 children. Government killed McVeigh by lethal injection on June 2001. Whatever hesitation a state execution provokes, even over a man such as McVeigh, necessary questions about the legitimacy of killing even an unrepentant soldier of white supremacy, his death provided a measure of closure to the uh, mother of one of his victims. It appeared at the end of a sentence, Kathleen Trenner said, whose four-year-old McVeigh killed. We'll watch the, we'll watch the uh, Chris Hitchens documentary on Kissinger, uh, uh, the trial uh, uh, on Henry Kissinger tomorrow. McVeigh, who in his own psychotic way, thought he was saving America and never remotely killed on the scale of Kissinger, the most revered American grand strategist, strategist in the second half of the 20th century. Yale University historian Greg Grant and author of the biography, Kissinger's Shadow, estimates that Kissinger's actions from 1969 to 76, a period of eight brief years when Kissinger made Richard Nixon's and then Gerald Ford's foreign policy as national security advisor and secretary of state, meant the end of between three and four million people. That includes crimes of commission, he explained as in Cambodia and Chile, and a mission like greenlighting Indonesia's bloodshed in East Timor, Pakistan's bloodshed in Bangladesh, and the inauguration of the American tradition of using and then abandoning the Kurds. The Cubans say there is no evil that lasts 100 years and Kissinger is making a run to prove them wrong, Grandin told Rolling Stone. Not before Kissinger died. Not long before Kissinger died. There is no doubt he'll be hailed as a geopolitical grand strategist, strategist even though he bungled most crises leading to escalation. He'll get credit for opening China, but that was De Gaulle's original idea and initiative. He'll be praised for detente, and that was a success, but he undermined his own legacy by aligning with the neocons. And of course, he'll get off scot-free from Watergate, even though his obsession with Daniel Ellsberg really drove the crime. No infamy will find Kissinger on a day like today. Instead, in a demonstration of why he was able to kill so many people and get away with it, the day of his passage will be a solemn one in Congress and shamefully, since Kissinger had reporters like CBS's Marvin Kalb, the New York Times' Henrik Smith wiretapped newsrooms. Kissinger, a refugee from the Nazis who became a pedigreed member in the Eastern Establishment of Nixon, hated, was a practitioner of American greatness, and so the press lionized him as the cold-blooded genius who restored America's prestige from the agony of Vietnam. Not once in the half century that followed Kissinger's departure from power did the millions of the United States killed matter for his reputation except to confirm a ruthlessness that pundits occasionally find thrilling. America, like every empire, champions its state murderers. The only time I was ever in the same room as Henry Kissinger was at a 2015 National Security Conference at West Point. He was surrounded by fawning army officers and ex-officials basking in the presence of a statesman. Seymour Hirsch, the investigative reporter who was most prominent uh, who was the most prominent exception to the fawning coverage of Kissinger, watched journalistic de uh, deference take shape as soon as Kissinger entered the White House in 1969. His social comings and goings could make or break the Washington Party, Hirsch wrote in his biography, The Price of Power. Reporters like the Times' James Reston were eager participants in what Hirsch called an implicit shakedown scheme, that is, access journalism, in which reporters who got inside information in turn protected Kissinger Wait one second. Hirsch called an implicit shakedown scheme that is access journals in which reporters who got insider information in turn protected Kissinger by not divulging either the full consequences of his act, acts or his own connection to them. Kissinger's approach to the press was his approach to Nixon, sniveling obsequiousness. Although Kissinger could vent frustration on reporters that he never could on his own boss. Hirsch quotes H.R. Haldeman, Nixon's chief of staff, remarking that Kissinger was the hawk of hawks inside the White House, but touching glasses at a party with his liberal friends, the belligerent Kissinger would suddenly become a dove. Reviewing one of Kissinger's litany of books, Hillary Clinton in 2014 said Kissinger, a friend whose counsel she relied upon as Secretary of State, possessed a conviction that we and President Obama share, a belief in the indispens uh, indispensability of continued American leadership and service 
of a just and liberal order. Kissinger told USA Today, within days that Clinton presumed then to be the president in waiting, ran the State Department with the most effective way that I've ever seen. The same story noticed a photograph, auto, uh, photograph autographed by Obama thanking Kissinger for his continued leadership. It's always valuable to hear the reverent tones with which American elites speak of their monsters. When the Kissingers of the world pass, their humanity, their purpose, their sacrifices are foremost in the minds of the respectable. I'm going to... Uh, I'm probably going to have Noah on tomorrow, and I'll probably have Spencer on, too. I'm going to fucking hit him up. Wait, does Spencer no longer have... Spencer Ackerman no longer have a Twitter? What the fuck? I know. I saw Noah announced... Um, oh, he does. Okay, never mind. I couldn't find it. I'm no talk. Would you like to come on? It's always valuable to hear the reverent tones with which American elites speak of their monsters. When Kissingers of the world pass their humanity, their purpose, their sacrifice, are foremost in the minds of the respectable. American elites recoiled in disgust when Iranians in great numbers took to the streets to honor one of their monsters, Qasem Soleimani, after a U.S. drone strike executed the Iranian external security chief in January 2020. Soleimani, whom the United States declared to be a terrorist and killed as such, killed far more people than Timothy McVeigh. But even if we attribute to him all the deaths in the Syrian civil war, never in Soleimani's wildest dreams could he kill as many people as Henry Kissinger. Nor did Soleimani get to date Jill St. John, who played Bond girl Tiffany Case in Diamonds Are Forever. Kissinger's ascent occurred through an obscenity that time cannot diminish. In 1968, Lyndon Johnson agreed to peace negotiations with the North Vietnamese and tacit recognition of the nightmare he, building on the works of his two immediate predecessors, brought to life in Vietnam. Kissinger, an influential Cold War defense intellectual at Harvard, had access to members of the diplomatic delegation to the Paris talks. He used it to feed information from the negotiations to Richard Nixon's presidential campaign, a campaign whose defeated GOP rival, David Rockefeller, Kissinger advised, and despite Kissinger's closer political ties to the Coterie, Coterie? around Hubert Humphrey, Nixon's Democratic rival, Nixon ran for president claiming to have a secret plan to end the war. His advisors told Hirsch, told Hirsch they were deeply afraid that Johnson and Hanoi would reach an accord before the election. It would save lives in Vietnam, American and Vietnamese, but it would undermine Nixon's hopes of exploiting the explosion of domestic anti-war sentiment. <clears throat> Nixon gratefully took what Kissinger gave him to make the U.S.'s proxy regime in Saigon, whose regime peace would destabilize, more intransient. Intransigent. No agreement was reached until 1973, and the war ended American humiliation with Hanoi's 1975 victory. You close the lights behind me. I don't know what's going on. It took some balls to give us those tips. Richard Allen, a foreign policy researcher on the Nixon campaign, later reflected to Hirsch. To the Hirsch. It's a pretty dangerous thing for Kissinger to be screwing around with national security. Every single person who died in Vietnam between autumn 1968 and the fall of Saigon, and all who died in Laos and Cambodia, where Nixon and Kissinger secretly expanded the war within months of taking office, as well as all who died in the aftermath, like the Cambodian genocide, their destabilization set into motion, died because of Henry Kissinger. We will never know what might have been. The question Kissinger's apologists and those in the U.S. foreign policy elite, which are, you know, that's reductive. Those are the Kissinger apologists who continued on his legacy for the most part, insist upon when explaining away, uh, or sorry, uh, elite who have stood in or who imagine themselves standing in Kissinger's shoes, insist upon when explaining away his crimes. Kissinger materially sabotaged the only chance for an end to the war in 1968 as a hedged bet to ensure he would achieve power in Nixon's administration or Humphreys. A true tally will probably never be known of everyone who died so Kissinger could be national security advisor. Yeah, Noam Chomsky has officially outlived Henry Kissinger, which is good. It's a sad day for us because he was a leader that led through challenging times. And I hope that everyone's reaction to his passing is to go learn a little bit more about him that you did. I agree. I 100% agree. As a matter of fact, I do. Yes, everyone will forcibly learn about Henry Kissinger in the upcoming week. And that will not be a good thing because Henry Kissinger and his policies were so monstrous and so far in our rear view mirror that we can actually make honest assessments about them because, as you know, liberals love the current war even though they hate all the previous wars um, and say the previous wars were bad. They talk about all the civil rights movements of the past as a good thing that they would certainly support, just not the one that's currently happening now, right? But Henry Kissinger's actions 
are very much in the rear view mirror. So a lot of liberals who will lap up the rest of the State Department propaganda for the ongoing wars will, at the very least, come to the recognition, at the very least, come to the recognition, that's Madeleine Albright on the left chatter who asked who's that on the left didn't know before uh, around your dinner table or when you're driving in the car with your kids tell them a few Kissinger co quotes that that were used at strategic times give them a little bit of history because if we forget uh, what happened in the past we're doomed to repeat it and many times throughout history the United States Wait, is she being woke like what's happening I'm confused states of America went through dark times and leaders like Kissinger stood up and they took action and they provided leadership when we needed it the most. Yeah. Making a lot of history. <sighs> anyway, before we get back to the article, here is Mao being surprised at the height of Henry Kissinger's wife. Like, look at the size of your wife, man. Your God. Once in the White House, Nixon and Kissinger found themselves without leverage to produce a pence, uh, piece of cord with Hanoi. In the hopes of manufacturing one, they came up with a madman theory. This is... Oh, uh, everything. Everything is so bad. This is just another sequence of demonstrable L after L after L. Just demonstrable failures over and over again. As we just fucking pursued the might is right politics. In American foreign policy over and over and over and over again. Oh, yeah, they, they, he got a fucking, he got a Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, of course. So did Obama. Fuck you mean. You can often tell within that neutral tone that people adorn in American media and Western media in general when someone is truly a unique monster, right? Look at the words of the New York Times. Look at the, the, the way that David Sanger, White House and National Security Correspondent for the New York Times, wrote about Henry Kissinger, who engineered the U.S. opening to China, negotiated its exit from Vietnam, and used cunning ambition and intellect to remake power relations at the height of the Cold War, sometimes trampling on democratic values, dies at 100. The fact that this is, like, this is the most you're going to get. Okay, like the, the Adolf Hitler would be written about like this if uh, if he was an American. Okay, straight up, Obama be considered a war criminal as well. Fuck yes. What do you mean? Every American president? Well, yes, every single one. Tweeting you're delighted an old man's death won't win you converse, converts or repulse potential allies. At least not on a large enough scale to matter. It will, however, make you a worse person, which is why you shouldn't do it. Yeah, reporter for Free Beacon. Shut the fuck up. Suck my... You like him so much. Why don't you go visit him? You know what I mean? Like, he's fucking... You can you can follow him, you know? Into the deepest, darkest pits of hell. Fuck, get the fuck out of here. He's a classic. I'm hearing that on his deathbed, Henry Kissinger received the light of Islam and unhesitatingly recited the Shahada. Even now, he looks down on the Ummah from the gardens of Jannah. Uh, truly, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. 